Welcome to Haunting the Haunted Paranormal Podcast. I'm David with Joe and Sid, your hosts. And today we are talking about the Dybbuk Box and spiritual attachments. And some uh, team updates, which it's been interesting the last week. Interesting. Yeah. Um, You're telling me. Next, the next week we were supposed to go to Twin City in McConnellsville. But with uh, something coming up, um, one person had the guy that I was talking to. He had his schedule updated for the the investigation, and the, the actual management for the place did not. So we kind of had a reschedule and whatnot, and uh, so everything's fine. It's pushed back to September twenty fourth now. Uh, I've been scrambling to find a new place. Either it was too much for Did you just say September twenty fourth. Yeah. Is there any other day? I don't know. I will talk to you afterwards. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> as of right now, that's that. That's the date. Um, but um, I've been scrambling to find a new place. Either it cost too much or they had bookings. And I was looking at the Monroe House in Indiana, in which I think the best one was on the 12th, I think. The 12th and the 16th. And that was not going to work out. So I had the last last resort because I was saving it for my wife. But she was going to be in the area anyway. We are going to go to the Gill House next Friday. Oh, and- the Gill House, it's one of my favorite places. So I spoke to them yesterday and they said, we got some volunteers or a volunteer to do it. So we're going to go to the Gill House next week. So it's going to be a fun night. And again, and, I, I don't know anything about the Gill House. I don't. Did we talk about it last time? Uh, uh, I, I did. My I'm brain a, never works anyway. I probably don't remember I, anything. I, I'm a volunteer out there at the Gill House. Are you? Yes. I do their public ghost hunts out there. Interesting. Yeah, that was our last minute scheduling, and they were kind enough to find somebody to do it. And we are going to go there next Friday on the 13th. Friday the 13th. Even better. So, and plus, um, I also got into contact with uh, Franklin Castle, and that's sometime in July. I got to put a down down deposit on it. Okay, I'll make sure to send you dates. How um, many hours are they giving you, David? At the Gill House? No, at uh, Franklin Castle. Uh, I think it was. I think it's like nine to two or something like that. It wasn't much, but it's something. Yeah. We've been wanting to do it, so so. We just gotta go fast. So that's the update for our team. What about your team, Joe? Yeah, we got the Buckingham House out here in Newark, Ohio. Um, like I said last time, the the uh, city of Newark approved us to investigate this place that has never been investigated before. So it's going to be a treat. And then we're going to have like, the public in there to actually be investigators. I mean, I think I've investigated so many places. It's pretty much all the same anymore, I guess. Um, kind of blur together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, you get an EVP is pretty much it, the same it, thing. It comes to the point. Yeah, it comes. It comes to the point where if you get an EVP, like the last time we, house, we actually had it. Actually, we got a video coming out. Me and uh, Bill Squires are putting together. We did a video for for the Gill House. Uh, we actually. Over my recorder, I actually got a woman say, who's in here? I mean, it was loud. I mean, those are the kind of EVPs that I'm like, what? But like, hey, or, you know, whatever. Hello, like but, the smaller ones are like, okay, you know. Yeah, it, yeah exactly. It, it's kind of like you're looking for that, um, I don't know how, how you want to say it, like the the uh the mecca of all evps i guess i guess there's no such thing honestly 
It's just it's um, like you got great value EVPs and then like Kroger. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Your yes. name brand and your off brand. Exactly. <laughs> yes. so Wish and Amazon. Found, yes. So I found something interesting. Remember how I talked about that uh, Cleveland residential and how I found that kids laughter within like 10 seconds of the recording. So I was uh, organizing the the recorders and naming them and putting them in files and whatnot. And I came to that one. I tried to find it. And for some reason, now I can't hear the kid's voice on the, the recording. So I don't know what happened or why. It's the same recording, but I just cannot find it anymore. Has that ever happened to you where you, mm. like, found an EVP and then, like, later you can't find it after so many months of on the top shelf? Yeah. I mean, I have. I mean, there's sometimes I'll, like, look in the wrong spot. And then, I like, I know it's right there. Then you listen, like, maybe a month later or a couple weeks later. And all of a sudden, you hear that. I was like, oh, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> Yeah, I I cannot find it. It, like, it legit disappeared. And I was like, uh, I don't know what's wrong with this. And I know I only did one recording for the whole time when I was there. So I was like, I wonder if Joe had that same experience. And like to a certain point, too, I wonder how much of that. I feel like to a point you can't review the evidence the night after, the right after the next time you're conscious, because I feel like maybe you're still riding that high or the adrenaline too. But at the same, I, I don't know, like that's just how I go about it, just because I self doubt myself all the time with what I'm hearing. So I always like to give like a little bit of a buffer, like wind down, maybe play some video games and then go back over things with a clear head and go at it that way. Yeah, for me, it's like a few days after because I'm so tired <laughs> to even look at uh, evidence. I was so. running like the Energizer Bunny at the last investigation, man. I was awake the whole time. Full. Yeah. The last time. one, you were with the Ghost Sisters at Pennsylvania, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. I was up for over 24 hours, fully functioning, might I add. <laughs> Yeah, I can't do that. Maybe I a little no. more high strung, which is doesn't seem possible, but here we are. But I still run pretty good. <laughs> the longest that I've uh, stayed up was like 42, and that was just the start of boot camp for Navy. And that was the worst time. Was I was hungry. so miserable. <laughs> but anyway, um, spiritual, let's start with spiritual attachments. So they can come in any way, shape, and form, demonic, demonic. Uh, person ghost if you want a human ghost or what do you want to classify it as and um they can attach to you because you are um easy target uh do you guys agree with that yeah i mean they can definitely sense it too but the crazy thing is is that like i go thrifting a lot love goodwill you oh, guys yeah. be careful like i like going in there as you know the sensitive medium that i am or whatever you want to call it and like I'll look at something and I'm like, we are not taking that home. Or like, yeah, I want to take that home. It's such a weird, they can attach to just about anything. They can attach to land, items, people. It's pretty uh, pretty versatile. I'll give them that. Applause to the ghosts. Yeah, especially antique stores. Well, my uh, favorite. We used to have one on 20 and I, there's like nobody there. But I know and, and like antique items, especially like back in 1800s. Like, if a spirit is so attached to an item, either if it's uh, antique or not, it's like that bond. And wherever it goes, it goes. Yeah, we actually um, picked up a vintage old fire truck, and it's sitting out in the garage. And uh, we were really hoping. There's actually three paranormal investigators that live in this house. So where we were all, like, fingers crossed, is the garage haunted now? And, like, there's nothing to it. There's nothing attached to it. So, I mean... It could be something as simple as a ball or something as complex as a collection of dolls. I mean, you just don't know. Dolls is a good one. That, uh, uh, no, it's a, not. But <laughs> <I guess. laughs> they're, they're a good conduit for spirits to attach themselves and go wherever that object goes. Um, especially like the Annabelle doll, which I'm still trying to dig on like the origin of it. I just want to hug her. I just can't find how it all started like it all i can find was um 
like back in the 70s it was a gift to a nursing student from her mom and then and then it just snowballs from there and everybody knows that story i'm sure and where they like start having weird experiences with it threatening notes and stuff like that so i before that i don't know how the spirit got into this um raggedy and all so i'm still trying to figure that out could have been anything from i guarantee when i go my teddy bear is going to have something in me just with the sheer amount of trauma dumping i did on a stuffed animal i mean it could just be someone's love for something that you, you just don't know well i guess this demon really loves this doll for some reason <laughs> I, I would go to the ends of the earth for that teddy bear upstairs. You don't understand. He's got his own passport and everything. Like, if I'm going to be connected to anything when I pass, it'll be that bear. Oh, geez. A passport for your teddy bear. Yeah. <laughs> that bear's over 60 years old. But, um, uh, let's see. What about you, Joe? Well, about me. Okay, I want to go farther than that. Okay. okay. Let's dig. All right. Could be spirits, could be ghosts, whatever. Uh, could be. Could it be something else. Could it be like everybody believes in aliens and stuff like that. It's a good possibility that let's say you bring something home and because I believe there's layers in the universe there's a reason why we get EVPs. There's a reason why we get reaction over devices and stuff like that. Where's this coming from is so the question is, let's say it is spirits. So is there, is there a heaven? Is there a hell? You don't know because apparently we're not dead, but um, is there something else responding to us? that we don't know we're searching maybe for the wrong thing maybe it could be an entity i mean i've talked to people that had entity entities attached to them from somewhere else so it's a possibility that that could also be a like a gateway like a gateway right. to whatever's out there yeah to manipulate your mind thinking it's a ghost and if they're saying as as aliens whatever they're smart enough to know which I, I believe there's something out there other than just us i mean it just cannot just be us that's that's totally it's got to be impossible the world's too expansive for there not to be other sentient life form somewhere Absolutely. So if they can actually make these spaceships or they could live underwater or something like that or whatever, um, why couldn't they manipulate something as easy as a dress or a, like you said, a toy fire truck or a teddy bear or a doll that's in, in like, it, it, in a room who knows i mean so there's a lot of questions i'm not just gonna say it's all spirits because because if it's all spirits or ghosts or whatever that'd be easy for us now it's like totally different now the government is saying that there's such thing as aliens they so, released a whole bunch of, they, of yes, yes. We need to have a whole episode on aliens because we should. I've seen we so should. many documentaries and things. Like I could go on for hours about aliens. Well, I, um, I don't know anything about aliens, so I guess I I'll leave. Us. Don't even worry about it. I'll leave yeah. the, that episode, maybe the next episode, <laughs> for you guys just to con conversate about that because I have no idea. So yeah. you can educate me and whoever is listening about it. So. All I know right here, folks, episode four aliens. We're uh, that's going to be a great episode. Okay, so it's, confirmed. <laughs> it's, it's confirmed. It's confirmed. Aliens but, next episode. <laughs> but you know what, though, it kind of it kind of um, coincides with the 
paranormal aspect. I mean, because we're investigators. We, right. if I seen a UFO laying in my in my yard, I'd be like, uh, I'm I'm a par I'm a ghost hunter. I'm not a paranormal investigator. I'm going to go out there and try to figure out what is in my yard. Right. It's Cause like because I'm an investigator. That's that's what I do. This is I got I've been to so many places that you you kind of think after a while after doing this, like there's got to be more to what they have in this house. Why is it like this? I mean, you know, why why is this place like this? Is it the na whole neighborhood? Is it wherever? I mean, right. why why can I go out and get EVPs out in the middle of nowhere? So either something's trying to communicate with us through our devices that we don't know, or we got stuff in limbo. So that's how I see it. And like paranormal, I feel, at least in my aspect, doesn't necessarily just mean ghosts. I mean, paranormal no. is anything that goes outside of the normal understanding. And I feel like all those things kind of coincide with that, including cryptids yeah. and like yeah. Yeah. folks tales and things like that. I mean, it all just kind of coincides and conglomerates into this one big area, which is what we consider ourselves paranormal investigators. Yeah. So if y'all ever want to go alien hunting, call me up. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a line. It's a line of two classifications. It's a paranormal investigator, which we just discussed about, your cryptids, Bigfoot, aliens, stuff like that. And then if you're just specifically looking at ghosts, you're a ghost hunter. So that's how I see it, too. So it's just that fine line if, if you want to go to the left side or the right side. So It's like, uh, it's like an onion. There's just constant layers to what yeah, you consider. Yeah, because I, I figure, figure, you know, you just say, well, I'm a ghost hunter. It's like, okay. Well, I'm a paranormal investigator. So... Well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is a, a ghost hunter just believes it's just ghosts. It, it, all it is is ghosts and spirits and whatever. They they believe that. That's what they believe. As when you go farther into being a, a investigator, going to place after place, you think there's got to be something else different than why the, all these places are haunted it's like are they like i said are they in limbo is it something else other than spirits and ghosts and because they can mock whatever was around that area at one point in time yeah so or try to like uh act like that person or act like somebody so who knows so there's two differences between an investigator and a ghost hunter I mean, you know, so that's how I see it. Uh, yeah, that's actually, that's pretty much true. Um, and also it's the professionalism, like a paranormal investigator, you're, you're a professional on, or no, I can't say professional because no one's professional. It's more, you're more educated yeah, in it. You know? Seasonal. There you go. And then ghost hunting, if you're a ghost hunter, it's just more like, amateur kind of like um you're just trying to go with a group of friends and get scared at this place at these places or whatever you know so it's it's more in depth yeah. versus just going for the thrill for it i agree i mean you know it's like people uh, do these public ghost hunts or whatever they believe they're ghosts yes that's what they believe they believe they're ghosts me there's since i've been doing this for god knows how long there's got to be more to this. There's there has to be more to what we are communicating with. Right. Could it be spirits? Sure. Could it be something other than that? Sure. Why not? Could it be a dude living in the walls whispering things to the vents? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, that's 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 funny because that brings up the episode of uh oh shoot. It's not paranormal caught on camera, but it was some other show where these, and this couple basically had their own routine as like everybody does. And the husband was wondering why there's like no food in the fridge. 
and was thinking that his wife was eating all the food, like a whole month's worth of food. And she said no. So they got kind of curious, set up cameras up. And when they went back to the video, there was a woman in the ceiling, like in the air duct or something like that, living in there for so I don't know how long, knows the routine, and caught her on camera <laughs> coming from there and eating all the food. And like there was one point where he walked in the middle of the night, she like ran out, hid, and then when he left, she went right back to the fridge. So <laughs> that was, that's funny when you said that, and that just came up. So. I was thinking of a movie that I have a slight obsession <laughs> with, but I mean, yeah, that works too. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it was funny because I forgot what show it was I was watching, but I thought it was hilarious when that just connected like that. But after your hundred plus or so investigations, and, mo and I'm sure you've done a lot of uh, residentials too. Sure. How many times or what do you say to people when they ask you is are these ghosts going to follow me home what do you say to them there's always a chance i mean you could go into a walmart okay you could go to a walmart let's say there's something there you could go into a walmart you could go into uh anywhere and let's say there's a spirit attachment or whatever it is. That's why I always say whatever it is, because I don't want to say it's just totally a spirit attachment. It could be anything that follows you home. Um, it's just like a lost puppy. Okay. It's like, they okay, follow you home. What are you going to do with it? I mean, but if you have some sort of, let's say, let, let's be, let, let's call it what it is. Like the biggest the biggest uh, elephant in the room, if let's say you have anxiety, depression, um, all kinds of stuff. Let's say they target you. They target you because you have these issues. And you come home and you're like, there's stuff that's moving around and I can't understand it. So as an, as an investigator, this is what you do. So when... You go to their place, you have to ask them. You have to almost be like a cop. Like, you have to ask them, like, hey, is, are you arguing with your other spouse? Or are you arguing with, what's your life like? Or do you have depression? Do you have anxiety? Uh, different other things to where these entities will attached to you yeah so you have to ask these questions and then they're not sure what it is so you have to educate them on what it could possibly be now the best thing is to get evidence out of these put out of these places to figure out what it is they want to know who it is and honestly we don't have the answer to that we don't have the answer to who this is or what this is. That's that's the thing. I mean, they believe it's ghosts and and whatever. Fine. I mean, they. But you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is dog. My Aussie. Yeah, it's my Aussie. But um, you have to educate them. It could be something other than what they think it is. Yeah. So that's 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 how it is. Yeah, I've I've been asked a few times about it, and especially if we have um, guests on our investigations. Like, I I don't know. Yeah, I can't I can't give you that answer. They will they will attach themselves to whoever, or they will stay at this location. So I cannot answer that for them. So it's 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 basically random. You can be like you said at Walmart, yeah. and it, it can follow you. Um, Back to the Absolutely. domestic violence, the uh, mental states, oh. stuff like that. With negative energies, negative entities, spirits, whatever you want to call them, they will follow you so they can feed off of that. So and then that's why it's important to have somebody that has a good mindset. So and so they don't have that attachment. And it's very hard to break a negative 
energies bond with somebody that has that mental state or that violence or drug use, alcohol, alcoholism or whatever, you know, it's very hard to break that bond. And like, as, as an empath, as I go, it's a really simple way to explain it is as a person, like if you've seen Lilo and Stitch, they, he'd filled in halfway. There's a percentage bar essentially. Yes. The lower your percentage bar is, the more susceptible you are to things, no matter what's going on in your life. If it is something as simple as an argument or family trauma or whatever it may be, that's why I was always so open to everything. There was mental illness. A, 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 wow, mental illness galore. <laughs> and like I've, I've always been super surrounded by all kinds of crazy things. But I mean... Yeah, the lower that bar is, the more susceptible you are to things. But if you recharge, if you do that self-care, if you're meditating and grounding yourself with that light and trying to do, you know, whatever to purify or cleanse or whatever you want to do to yourself, um, that's usually the best way to go about it to try to recharge and get that off of you. That's why one of the services I offer are the house blessings and the cleansings. I actually will even like after investigations, I've done a couple of like quick spiritual wipe downs before I even get in my car. Like it's, it's just, you got to know what you're doing and you got to, again, going back to that paranormal things outside of scientific explanation, there's no reason why I should be able to feel someone's emotions walking into a room, but for some odd reason, it's always correct. Right. And you know what, I, and you know what, Sydney, I do too. It's like, there's, there's times when I go to home investigations and stuff like that. And you could, you always scope out what these people are going through. Maybe one person was like, hey, how you doing? And it was all happy and whatever, and it, like I did in Indiana. When I walked into the house, I seen this person. You could see the depression. You could see the anxiety. You could see this person was scared. This, I'm like, okay, so this is the focus right here. It's not the guy that came out to the driveway and greeted us. It's what's inside the house right? that's looking like it's grieving. So, of course, there's elemental stuff, too. Elemental is coming from the land. So, maybe it's cursed or, or whatever, and it attaches to a certain person inside this house. It used to be their land. Now it's your land, and they're not liking it. So, they will attach to a person, the weakest person in the house. Yes. Or the most the susceptible weakest. of a child. Uh, yeah, I, right, right. But I'm not saying like weak, like in not strong enough, but like mentally weak. And that's actually what happened. Would it attach to the person that you could see that has depression, anxiety, different things like that? And it would attach to the children. Right. So the children could see what she is experiencing and she knows this. Now the other the other person was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So right. And then like him, them. when it comes to children, they are most septic. Uh, but septic. also except whatever. Thank you for re for correcting me. But anyway, it's like um autistic kids mentally need kids they are the most easy targeted kids because they don't know the difference and like they will talk to spirits they'll interact with spirits and spirits will um attach to them and stuff like that and i've seen that before where they uh like communicate with them play with them and this is where it comes with um imaginary friends comes in yeah so and they're an easy target for negative energies also i say i did all that i mean i feel like almost any kid in that area would do the exact same thing well, growing up in the house that i grew up in with a double murder that happened there mm -hmm. i mean i that that's what i grew up with i stayed in one of the worst and most active rooms for a good chunk of my life and I mean, I had the imaginary friends. I've always, like I said, I've always been around just weird stuff. I, that, in that house, I had been touched in the kitchen. I had seen people walk in through the dining room. Um, one of them grabbed me in the shower. That was terrifying. <laughs> like, if you're a kid 
there's a really good chance you're going to be able to be more open to it because you do believe in the imaginary friends. You do believe in the dragons and the everything else out there in the world. You believe in, you, I almost said you believe in Santa, but Santa, of course, is still real. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's just a, as a kid, you're just so much more open to those things. And like, what's weird is I didn't know about the Annabelle doll, but my invisible friend, Wilbur, was the Raggedy Andy doll. That's what he looked like. <laughs> so like, I I don't know. It, it, like, you don't know, but Wilbur was cool. Wilbur was a good guy, but. Well, <laughs> well let's talk about Robert the doll. Robert, yeah. the doll. Robert the doll, you go down there in Key West, Florida. Let's say you take a picture of Robert the doll. And without you don't permission. ask for you without permission. And all of a sudden your life turns. Goes to shit. Like, yeah, it, <laughs> your life is a mess and you, you wreck your car, your wife leaves you, um, whatever else, whatever else. Then you go back and apologize to Robert the doll. Everything turns around. Mm -hmm. There has been so many claims of this situation happening. When you go back in a, and apologize to Robert the doll, then things start turning around again. So that's that's attachment. How's that not attachment? That's that's an attachment to where your life is a living hell until you go and apologize to this this uh, stuffed uh, sailor with a dog on his lap sitting in a rocky chair in a glass case. It's like, yeah, and everything so humanity, yeah your yeah, boy everything. Zach Bagans Every said, your boy Zach Bagans, uh, um, he he uh investigated that too, he did that, and then there's multiple people, and from their source, from the owner, they said that they do come back, apologize, and they've had multiple letters, and they do read it to yeah. them, and it, which they is kind of wild to even hear that they read the letters of, of apology to them see and like i'm a very firm believer in if it's it's not a dumb idea if it works like it, it like it's the same theory of you know me with my spell jars giving them to people if you don't want it don't take it but you know they work but it also like wearing the right socks on game day it's 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 stupid only if it doesn't work but if it works yep. then what's the harm in doing it uh, obviously with these people or with them sending letters and you know updating that's kind of crazy that they touch base multiple times back with the owners and are like hey my life's better now sorry to, again to robert and that like to have people change their minds so quickly is always very interesting to see what happens yeah it, yeah i mean it, it, it's just like you know it's like what's attaching what, what's attaching this to these people i mean is it robert the doll itself what what is it is it coming from somewhere else is it coming from that doll it's the dog it's the dog on the lap it could be the dog yeah it could be the dog absolutely but it, who knows what you know what these these uh wh where this is coming from i mean is that doll so haunted that you take a picture and then all of a sudden your life's a wreck. Well, what is it? Right. I mean, why? I mean, we'll never figure it out. Again, it's, it's that whole paranormal thing. You just you just don't know. Those are answers we're not going to have until we're dead. Yeah, when it comes to haunted dolls, haunted whatever, especially with Robert the doll or Annabelle, you don't want to like challenge it, see how powerful no. it is. Because no. Because I know the Warrens opened up their museum to the public one time. And I still remember this story. This guy, this biker guy, he went and he challenged the Annabelle doll. He tapped on the glass. He's like, oh, this thing's not haunted. This is fake, whatever. He challenged it and challenged its power. And then I think later that night, he got into a bad motorcycle accident because he was challenging yeah. that doll. I'm yeah. like, how weird is it for it to line up like that? Like, again, it's it's a what's a coincidence and what's not, but that's weird. That's a little weird. Yeah. 
it, it's always questioning is is this actually paranormal or is this just a coincidence just a bad timing in your timeline you know so it's it's very hard to but there's so, there yeah but there's so many claims of this that it's not a coincidence anymore right just same as robert the doll and same with annabelle which is not the same annabelle in the movie but no. people know that but um it's 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 more it's not a coincidence anymore it's not no. i mean so you gotta look at it to what it is you don't challenge these things and you always give them respect if if I go down there to Key West and see Robert the Doll, I'm not taking a picture with Robert the Doll without permission. Oh no, I'd ask. 100%. Oh no, no. With a hundred plus accounts crashing, no. and, you know. There's too many good things happening right now. Normally, like maybe back in the day when I was a little bit more spry, maybe I might have challenged, but no, I no, I got too much going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or, like, nope, is it not Bob Mackey's? There's a bar out in Vegas. I think it is what it is. Same thing. What is it? Bob Mackey's Grill Bar. Bobby Bobby Mets Bobby Mackey's is in between West Virginia and Ohio, right there. It's uh, it? Wilder. It's in Wilder, Kentucky. Bobby Mackey's there Music World. There we you see. That's one we should go do. I didn't realize it was that it's, close. It's not worth it. It's like five hundred dollars for the night for like two hours. It's not oh, okay, two hours. Like it's it's not very long, and they take you like an hour to get through the tour and whatnot. It's not worth setting up and hey, doing. Zach Bagans, if you're watching this, we should totally go. Like I'd have a lot of fun doing that. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he's gone back two or three times now. Like if anyone was to go back, just just tag me in. That's all I ask. <laughs> I'd love to go. That'd be so much just, fun. Just clear up the air. Tell tell everybody what you said to me the first time when I mentioned that Zach Bagans. And how much you liked them. <laughs> like, well, it was funny because, like, I started off with Taps. Absolutely love those guys. I That was where I started off. But then I, like, was an edgy vampire girl when Twilight came out. So, like, when Zach Bagans was a ghost hunter, I was... <sighs> I definitely want to be a ghost hunter now. It was terrible. It was terrible. But there's still a small place in my heart for that jerk. <laughs> but, you know, he used to be... He was a failed actor, right? Yep. Oh, okay. I, I, yes, he was. He I was on Wheel of Fortune. Was he? Yes, he was. Look I at him. Yeah, he's a failed actor, and he got that got that job on uh, History Channel, and he's a rich man now. I just want to go to his house. I know he's got the not for that reason, but he's got a museum <laughs> at his house, and he's got a whole bunch of like crazy things in this insane museum. I actually even like read his book when it came out. It was it was bad. So like well, I will probably reference Zach more times than I care to admit. Well, my friend <laughs> uh, Kayla Samotin, she's oh, yeah. a investigator at uh, Don or Date Haunted Explorers. We investigate quite a bit together. I haven't investigated with her for a while, but she went to his museum and she got followed home by something. Her and somebody else. So I know there are so many crazy things in that house. And like it doesn't surprise me that something would attach from there because just the sheer amount of chaos that is in that little museum. I'd be shocked if something didn't follow you home. Date what was it? Date and what? Date and haunted explorers. Okay. I probably have to look that up then. It's just it's just her. That she doesn't have anybody else on her team. It's just her. It's insane so man kudos to her for going by herself or doing this by yourself well i i think she like teams up with other investigators whatever and uh we've teamed up quite a few times um in the past um i met her at the old licky county jail years back and i thought she was with the team come to find find out that she was by herself and she was all about investigating by herself. So we didn't, I would, that's when I was a volunteer at the old Licky County jail and it was a public ghost hunt. And I think she was just starting out at the time. So, yeah. Hmm. Sounds like fun. <laughs> oh. I do yeah. that. I'd investigate by myself once or twice. Um, but I mean, we love, we know. love her. She's great. She, she's, she's awesome. She, um, She'll come from Dayton just to go to a home investigation, which she has. 
she did like last year. I think it was last year. She came from a from Dayton to a home investigation until like one, two o'clock in the morning or whatever to help us out. And she's fabulous. She she goes a little bit too far with her stuff, but like does stuff in our own home. And so that has another, it's like that, that's another thing. She has stuff that attaches to her and bullers her home. And then she goes in there and tries to communi communicate with stuff that is in her home. She sounds so, like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I, I'm not that. doing that. When I was living in the funeral home, I sat quite a few times investigating in my own house. So that was a, uh, that was always fun. My husband didn't appreciate it, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> well, like I said, like we said, we have to do our house because this place is kind of weird in here. I'll I know there's a few times when I was taking a shower, I felt like there was someone on the other side of the curtain, and I was the only one home. That's when I you know. just swing. Just swing straight through the curtain. And if someone is there, they won't come in the bathroom again. <laughs> don't hit Tara. That's all I ask. Just don't hit Tara. She, she has plenty of experiences in this house. So, yeah. Who knows? And that but, kind of like leads into... I mean, it's, it's just... I don't know. I lost my brain. Go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> I kind of did too. Let me... Uh, Go ahead, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's <laughs> look at all three of us. We're like, oh, oh no. <laughs> in the in the in the boxes itself, I mean, like uh, the debut the 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 debut boxes. They, I mean, let's say you open one of them. I mean, there's oh, an attachment. No. <laughs> yeah, the debit I mean, box. They say there's like box. ten. They they say there's like ten debit boxes, and Zach Bagans has. Box one and seven, I think. Well, it's not like there's a set amount of them either. It's essentially typically originals. Yeah, well, original to a point because any witch essentially that's specialized in that area can trap a spirit in that, and then they seal it up a whole bunch of different ways, pack it with a bunch of herbs to keep it in there. Don't open it if you see a box covered in wax and ribbon and yeah. candles. Don't don't touch it. I've seen people go and like they do the diving off rivers and things and they find these wax covered bottles and boxes. And I'm like, it's there for a reason. Don't touch it. That's how horror movies start. Don't do that. <laughs> like, I mean, I've threatened to do it a couple times with um, a couple of the spirits that have been around. And uh, yeah, I mean. It's quote unquote easy to do if you're like me and have been doing it for a long time. But I mean, anyone can seal it up and it could be anything in that box. Anything right. at all in that box. Anything, yeah. For, like those, a, for those who are watching and listening on other podcast platforms, a Dybbuk box is a Jewish word. And in the dictionary, it says a malevolent, a malevolent wandering spirit that enters and possesses the body of living persons until exercise. So I just want to clear that up so people can understand what a debit, the word debit means. Debit, yeah. But go ahead, Ted. Continue. Uh, you got me in the middle of fiber fog. Um, so yeah, <laughs> like, uh, again, like they're pulling them out of rivers. They're opening them up. I, I myself can guarantee you that there's maybe a couple of things out in the area that I've maybe put in areas. <laughs> Don't open those things. Only if you've got balls of steel and have no regard for life should you open one of those. <laughs> My question well, for you, Sid, is you do herbs and stuff to put it in there. How do you actually trap a malevolent spirit into a box? Lots of shadow work, lots of meditating, and a whole lot of not fun. <laughs> a whole lot of not fun. It's a uh, you know, at least if I were to do it, I'd want everyone out of the house, and it would just be a me on me type deal to get whatever I need to get in there. I would want everyone out, just me. I don't care. I will I've been in sketchier situations <laughs> so, I mean that's part of what I want my job to be is to help people with these kinds of things. So 
that's why I try to be so open and so grounded and everything else, just because I know what I'm dealing with. Um, but yeah, I would end up clearing out the house and there'd be a whole thing I'd set up with all kinds of candles and incense and a bunch of things you would only typically see in a movie, but trust me when I say that they work, but, um, I would just really focus everything. We try to get everything in the box. And then, like I said, you wrap it, you seal it, you toss sigils on it, you throw everything you can in your power on that box if you don't want anything to get out. And like I said, you seal it and you shove it away somewhere where it hopefully won't be found by some idiot that's going to open it. How yeah, and do you, you know? You're basically giving yourself to these spirits or whatever. So you're, you're basically giving yourself your your mind, your whole body to, to these, to these spirits or whatever it is to go in this box, to be trapped. And believe me, they're smart. They're not, they're not dummies, but if they can actually, they can, if they can actually do what you ask them to do. And let's say you get rid of them, people will bury those divot, divot boxes in the backyard or whatever. It's like, if you find one, don't open it up. There's a reason why they're, like you said, they're in the water. There's a reason why they're in the ground. There's a reason why they're, they're sealed. in places <laughs> that they're sealed. There's reasons why people should not open them it's because it can make your life hell. You just don't know. And like, okay. again, it just boils off of keep your hands to yourself, really. Like, don't. There's reasons it looks like that. And if it freaks you out when you see it, you probably shouldn't open it. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, yeah. there's no money in there. It wouldn't be money in there. No. And that would lead also to, like, cheesecloths of, like, remainings of animals and whatnot for, like, satanic worshipping. Like, you do see that oh. in the ground or you dig it up or whatever. Satanists don't kill animals. <laughs> or whatever. I mean, there's remains and, like... And you know they used it in their practices, you know, and you, or unless I'm wrong, and I see you shaking your head, and like I'm a dummy here. That's that's because I'm a Satanist. Okay, <laughs> please explain Satanist. <laughs> I mean, like if you want to have a whole episode on that, I mean, but um, we can too. But it's so. I did a fun thing on Christmas, Christmas Eve of all things. I looked at my mother and I read the tenets of Satanism and the rules of Satanism. And she agreed with every single one of them. And I was like, ah, ha, 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 ha. interesting. But no, there's no violence towards children or animals, nothing like that. Um, it's all about bodily auto autonomy and respecting your boundaries, taking that self-care. If someone disrespects you, you don't talk to them anymore. You get rid of those emotional vampires that don't want to be around you. It has nothing to do with violence or anything like that. But the pretty cool thing is, is um, a lot of people are actually transitioning to Satanism right now to the Satanic Temple because of that Roe v. Wade overturn. Because of that bodily autonomy, it keeps them able to make their choices. So it's actually a really freeing type religion. So like what I would identify myself as is a uh, Satanist witch, essentially. I don't, I'm not Wiccan necessarily. I do take some of those holidays, but it's really about realizing your own power and taking care of yourself and your family which i think has been the only religion that i line up with fully so it sounds a lot scarier than what it is and i don't worship like any horned thing on the on a chair or anything like that it's about worshiping yourself and your family and keeping your family safe and keeping yourself safe against other people so i like i'm not advocating however like it is it's a pretty damn good setup i, I can't lie on that one it's it's something really nice about it, but yeah, no violence, nothing like that. I just happen to collect bones because I focus primarily in death witchcraft. So what you hear from Z your boy Zach Baggins is complete nonsense. <laughs> to me, yes, I will disagree with him on that. It's um, there's a difference between evil and Satanism, and Satanism is definitely not in any way, shape, or form evil. It just looks scary. <laughs> we so just have to look those. <laughs> So you're saying there's a fine line on what you are going to do in this It's just setup. being wicked. It's you there it's like choosing a loadout in a video game. You can essentially pick and choose because at the end of the day, you're you, whatever you're doing is whatever you're doing. Um 
and religion shouldn't dictate that. But I mean, whatever is going to help you be a better person, I feel is the best way to go about it. And after I started living my life for myself and taking care of myself, this is the best I've been in almost 26 years. So the, like the things that I try to do and balance myself with and just pick and choose and kind of build yourself up in any which way you can. I mean, that's usually how I try to go about it. But yeah, we can do a whole episode on that. Yeah, I promise you I'm not evil. Well, my husband might disagree, but... <laughs> it, it basically just says you're saying you're... Uh-oh. Good, good and there's good and bad. It's just your intention on what you're doing with it. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely done my fair share of hex jars, but I mean, I've also done a fair share of blessings and things like that. So, I mean, it's really... It really depends back and forth. I mean... One person can see it one way, but it's the same thing with Catholicism. One person sees it one way, another person sees it another way. It's right. all down to what you believe in at your core. So, I mean, that's kind of why I pick and choose. But And like yes, I've seen you do your hex jars, and you do it with a purpose, like a good intention, not something the other way around either. Yeah, I definitely don't do both. Why would I ever do both? Well, you know... Trust me, everything I've done has worked the exact way I want it to, and I will leave it at that. <laughs> Actually, one of those things that took place last night. So, uh, again, only a Dis dumb idea if it doesn't work. Disclaimer, she never killed anybody with these hacks. Correct. Correct. That's the one thing. I'm just, oh, I'm just my own Robert the Doll. Ask my permission, and I won't do anything bad. I promise yeah. viewers and listeners, Sid is a good person. She is not bad. <laughs> like I said, depends on who you ask, but uh, typically nine times out of ten, I'm a good person. <laughs> depends on who who uh, decides to say something stupid. <laughs> Everybody has their days. Oh, absolutely. I've noticed. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Definitely noticed. Oh, sometimes I wonder about you, Sid. Hey, sometimes. man. Sometimes. I just, I'm just here. I just exist <laughs> alongside aliens and ghosts and all kinds of other crazy stuff, man. So we do agree. Yeah, that... you see the you see the fake Bigfoot pictures that's going around on uh, social media. No, no, not yet. But now I'm gonna go look for that after this. Yeah, go look for that. It looks like somebody's like walking around in a, in like somebody's land or something like that, and. It took like four pictures of Bigfoot, whatnot, and the only, I, I just don't, you know, everybody said that they, somebody already debunked it, so. There used to be a show yeah. on sci-fi, it was called Fact or Faked. Yes. And that was where a whole bunch of my skepticism came in because they would take these videos or pictures or stories, travel to that location and try all the whole episode to replicate it. And it was such a cool show. I mean, they did it with ghost stuff. They did it with aliens, with cryptids, with all kinds of cool stuff. I wish that show was still on because it's so good. But if you ever find it, fact or faked off sci-fi, good stuff. Good stuff. Do they even air that anymore? No. They don't? Not anymore. Nope. They did it like three or four seasons. And every episode was flawless. I love that stupid show. I watched a couple episodes of that. I watched yeah. every single one of them. I was obsessed. <laughs> so our episodes are writing itself right now. We got an episode of Satanism, the good part of it. <laughs> and then we got the next episode of Aliens, which I'm going to leave that to you guys because I have no idea. And then the Aliens first. I'll get the rest of everything figured out. And then whatever else that we talked about for the third episode for the next episode. You know. I'm digging with aliens. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited yeah. about that one. I will leave yeah, that up to should. you guys. I'm stoked. I, I think that one should we be should next. talk about that. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, because like I said, everybody thinks everybody thinks it's, it's all ghosts and spirits and whatnot. I'm like, yeah, you sure? There is so much. I mean, out there. there is so much out there. There is so much out there that, that people just do not know. And the fact what's the going Pentagon on confirmed and released the information directly from the Pentagon. I'm going to get ahead of myself. We got to save that for next episode. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is that Area 51 holds all your aliens, all your outer space stuff, all the dead celebrities like Michael Jackson. <laughs> I'm telling you, we can get into this. 
So, I mean, that's all I know about aliens and whatnot. <laughs> but other than that, you need to educate me. So. You can jump in and ask me. I got this one covered. <laughs> so, final moment, uh, final thoughts for your next few minutes. What? And what's your next investigation, Joe? Uh, or like your I said, future we got, one uh, for the month. Yeah, we got uh, June fourth. We got the Buckingham House, and uh, we're gonna have the public go in and show them how to be an investigator. Then in July, we're going. We got Post Town Elementary School again. Uh, there's still six tickets left. Uh, uh, get your tickets, and it's a two day event with. Uh, Brian Cano from uh, Paranormal Con Camera, Hana Collector. Uh, he'll be there. It's fun working with him. He's a lot better than Zach Baggins, I promise. Um, <laughs> Probably, <laughs> but I just like looking at him. <laughs> well, whatever. But anyways, he's, he's a really nice guy. He's really personable. He'll talk to you, no problem. It's just, you know. Everybody has their own ways of, of of investigating. He's got his different ways, and you know that's fine. I mean, that's that's how it is, you know. And uh, you know, that's what we get on. Talk about probably possibly going to um, uh, Bel Air House. Um, try to get into the Brownola Cottage. Uh, the guy that's been on my team for two years, he's like my right hand guy. He's he's never been to these places, so I want to get him experience in these places that that he's never investigated before. And uh, we got a video coming out eventually. Me and him's got to work on it. We did a thing since you're talking about going to the go house. We did a video at the go house one night, and so we're still. We still got to put that together and put that out, and then we'll have a video out for YouTube or our channel, or wherever. So, yeah, we investigated it for I don't know whatever time it was till two o'clock in the morning. But yeah, and then what else? I uh, I'm going to be on the Ryan Effect here on June fifth. So that's another podcast. Howie Odell, mm -hmm. shout out to Howie. Howie's awesome. Um, so I'll be on his podcast. And uh, we got done doing Keeping It Real with uh, Eleanor Wagner a couple weeks back. I think a couple weeks back. We did her podcast, and she's she's awesome, too. She, when you do her podcast, you got to, where were you? Who was there? Da, 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 you know, so that's what we got going on for now. I'm sure things will change next time we talk, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. So, Sid, last time I kind of cut you off with your promotion of your business. <laughs> but go ahead and talk about your rating business and your openings and whatnot. It was actually hilarious. You cut off the broadcast and I was still talking. I saw broadcast ended and I was like, oh, no. Uh, but, yeah, no. Um, readings by Sydney is my Facebook page. Uh, in case you couldn't tell by my little thingy over here. Um, I do tarot readings. Um, like I said, I do house blessings, house cleansings, bodily cleansings, all that fun stuff. None of the ugly juice either. It's all herbs and whatnot. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely give me a follow on Facebook. Um, I'm actually out doing a couple things these next couple of weeks, uh, potentially a flea market. Um, we've also got uh, ladies night or artisan night, excuse me, artisan night at Gilbert's place in Bellevue. I'll be out there doing readings. I'll also have some things for sale with one of my buddies. Uh, she does like resin 3d printed skulls. Absolutely awesome. She's incredible with what she does. She decorates everything. We both make jars. So yeah, definitely. If you're in the area of Bellevue or Fremont, wherever, um, Gilbert's place out in Bellevue, uh, Thursday, last Thursday of this month, I'll be there. That's where I'll be. All right. Well, we this podcast is available on Spotify, Anchor, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, Google Podcast. Uh, I forgot other things, but we're out there in the streaming world. And we also do have a group on Facebook, Haunting the Haunted Podcast, where 
it allows you to share your stories, your experiences, future topics to discuss that we can see uh, interacting with one another. So that's pretty much. Well, well, you know, you know, David, I, I typed in corpse, what you got up there, corpse, and it came right up. So I yep. typed in haunting the, the haunted. It, it didn't come up. So just thought I'd let you know that. Okay. I guess I guess. People I are going to have a heart. Yeah. So. So definitely guess, like us on corpse. Definitely not uh, <laughs> honey the yes, honey yet. We do have our own team page, corpse contacting other realms of the paranormal yes. spectrum, and then we do have a group for the page too. So basically the same thing, but the podcast group is specifically for podcast stuff. So and then I believe we're going to go live next Friday. I think they allow that. I know Franklin Castle doesn't. So, oh right, we're wow. going somewhere next Friday. Next Friday at six p.m. We are starting and ending at two o'clock in the morning. So it's going to be that's a, a that's a lot different from the last time I went. They didn't let you go live. They didn't let you do take pictures. They didn't let you do any video. They didn't, nothing, nothing. Well, they, they if, if the Gill House, if the Gill House won't let us, then. Oh we'll no, the Gill House will absolutely. Oh yeah, yeah. Franklin yeah. Castle, they do not allow any of that. No, they don't. Not sharing. No, but the Gill oh, House, yeah. they will. Yeah, you go to the Gill House, tell Jen or uh, Jane Palmer Baker. I'm sure she's going to be the caretaker at the house. You need to take her in the basement. She loves going to the basement. She will not go to the attic. Nope. Well. So she I'm got called a bitch in the attic. <laughs> she she got called a bitch up there in the attic. So really, oh, yeah, I'm she did. Back. She she got called out. She got called. Uh, uh, she'll go up there with me because she knows nothing really will happen to her. But there's times where she just if she if she's the caretaker that night, she loves going to the basement. So you guys got to take her to the basement because either she'll ask you. Or whatever, but she's a awesome woman and she's a great caretaker, and um, should treat you good out there. She's right. she's fabulous. So well, that's that's it for this podcast. The next episode is going to be aliens, and that yes! is yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. Talk about you aliens. You guys, you guys can take over the podcast for that sure. one, <laughs> and I'll just sit back and listen. Oh. All right, guys. Absolutely. We'll see you guys next time, and we'll discuss the next day that we can do this podcast. Aliens. Absolutely. <laughs>